how was the first civilization of mankind so advanced? More than 6,000 years ago, they mapped the stars and constellations in such an accurate way that astronomers today can't explain it. They knew the solar system in detail. They represented it with the sun as a star in the center and planets revolving around it with orbits and positions that match with what we know today. And why do these look like DNA sequences? Make it make sense! We're talking before ancient Egypt, before Stonehenge. They gave us the first written language ever. The wheel, the plow. They invented a legal system with courts and jails and records. Their mathematics and measuring of time are still used today. They built these massive things called ziggurat. And in their art, we find what look like giants just hanging out with normal people. Like, I want to know. Icing on the cake. Their origin remains a mystery. Their language doesn't belong to any of the known linguistic families. We have no clue how they came to be. And how could they know so much? Which has scholars wonder, were they even more developed than us today? Can you guess who I'm talking about? Here's a clue. They were in Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization. What the f The reason it's called alien reproduction vehicle is that it's based on the study of extraterrestrial vehicles, but it is manufactured by human uh, military intelligence, aerospace contracting arrangements. Uh, and this is very important. It means that we, homo sapiens, have the ability to access this so-called zero point field of energy, which the, is the ambient field of energy from which all matter and energy is fluxing and can access that energy and generate all the power we need to run this planet without fossil fuels or pollution. I've seen copies of um, inter-office um, correspondence among defense contractors that openly stated that they felt the technology was a fundamental enabling technology, that it, it had um, all kinds of different defense applications, but it also had a lot of serious civilian applications that would be beneficial to humanity as a whole, to the environment. It seems obvious that um, someone, perhaps a group, maybe some kind of a rogue civilization within our society has captured the technology, they're exploiting it for their own aims, for their own interests, whatever those might be. There's not a, a sliver of doubt in my mind that it exists. The storyline basically is that there's a lot of work going on in the aerospace industry that would re indicate that we have black projects that have gone even darker. Stefan Marinoff was the leader of the European Free Energy Movement. In 1997, he made tremendous strides in the technology before he could develop his first prototype, he fell out of a window. Dr. John Mullen, a nuclear physicist, used to work for McDonnell Douglas, one of the largest military contractors in the world. He died of arsenic poisoning in 2004. His girlfriend was originally a suspect, but she was found dead in her apartment shortly after. There are no more suspects, there is no investigation, there will be no trial. Dmitry Petronov invented a plasma battery that powered his home for 14 months. In 2010, he went to a bakery and was never seen again. Zachary Warfield was another inventor who developed his own plasma battery. Warfield visited Petronov to exchange information. That same year, Warfield died in a strange boating accident in Washington, D.C. Yuji Malov was a physicist and expert in cold fusion. He claimed he had a working prototype of a free energy device. In 2004, the day before he was to make a public announcement about his findings, he was beaten to that. Arita Ghost actually patented free energy technology based on the zero-point field. In 2007, he was about to get on a flight to meet investors who were going to fund his research. He was found dead in his car at the airport. Rory Johnson created a cold fusion laser-activated magnetic motor that generated over 500 horsepower. He planned a public demonstration of four vehicles equipped with this magnetron motor. The U.S. Department of Energy placed a restraining order on this technology preventing publication, and though in excellent health, he died unexpectedly soon after. Mark Tomian, a physicist, patented technology called a star drive which uses zero-point energy very similar to the ARV. In 2009, he developed a working prototype. Shortly after, he died from an unexpected cardiac event. His research is missing. Stan Myers developed a working engine that ran on water. In 1997, he died from what was officially reported as a cerebral hemorrhage. This happened while having lunch with two potential investors. His last words were, I was poisoned. This past April, Mark was found dead in his apartment. Dude, nothing pisses me off more than throttling progress for profit. Nothing. 
outside of like destroying history like all those terrorist groups were bulldozing ancient temples and stuff because it didn't align with their religious beliefs those are like two of the my biggest pet peeves ever like stop erasing history allow us to learn from the past and stop throttling progress allow us to continue to move forward and grow as a civilization but it just comes down to like a few selfish assholes just focus more on profit than progress and that is the most infuriating thing in the world to me I think Jesus was half human, half alien, and I'll tell you why. In the regular Bible, you discover he's born of a virgin birth. But then in the Apocrypha text, you discover that his grandmother was also born of a virgin birth. When you read the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, you discover that he talks about he developed the ability to incarnate at will on and in any plane that he desires. That's pretty powerful stuff. He's saying he can come back however he wants and when he wants and in any dimension that he wants. He even talks about having rejuvenation chambers, which is what I believe the Serapium is located in Saqqara in Egypt, where they would actually create bodies and put bodies in these gigantic megaton stone boxes made of granite and diorite. And then he said that we, I would transfer my consciousness from one body to the next. He would leave another body in there rejuvenating for a hundred years and he'd come back and get it and he'd do that over and over again and that by that method he lived through eons pretty interesting so i think maybe they decided to come back to a womb that's an interesting concept so makes me think if i were to break this down to like modern understanding of let's say science fiction right let's just say science fiction because it, it may be true it may be possible but i'm not sure so we're going to call it science fiction big brain shit here if Jesus were an alien and he had advanced technology. Let's say he had the ability to transfer his consciousness and basically was able to, you know, put his consciousness into other vessels or bodies in order to like stay alive essentially like through eons like this guy said. I don't know if you've ever watched the show Altered Carbon on Netflix. Season 1 was pretty awesome, but basically they they did that. They transferred consciousness from people into other bodies and it's a really good show. The plot's really cool and stuff, but that's actually that's why that popped up in my head because I feel like most of the stuff we see in movies and stuff right now is this possible or about to be. So, yeah, cool. Jesus was an alien. Sick. Makes sense, I guess. <laughs> Let us project our present knowledge with a little imagination and speculate on how satellites might be used in future operations from a worldwide weather center. This is the master control room. Electronic maps and view screens display up to the minute pictures of the weather around the earth. Every hour reports are automatically received from all points at sea, on land, and in the air. 22,000 miles out in space, Three robot satellites train their sensitive television eyes on all parts of the Earth. These pictures are monitored on viewing screens in the weather center. Probably that plastic bag from that Katy Perry song. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind, ready to start again? That's it. She just <laughs> she saw a fucking angel and thought it was a plastic bag. What's wrong with me? <laughs> I have two words for you: immaculate constellation. So apparently, a government official, a whistleblower, is claiming that the government, the Pentagon is hiding a cluster of UFOs or UAPs, whatever you want to call it, right? Nowadays, they just keep changing the names. Every year, it's the same thing. UFOs, UAPs, aerial phenomena, whatever. They're hiding a cluster of UFOs. They have orbs, discs, spheres, ovals, Tic Tacs, triangles and so on they are hiding a cluster 
of UAPs from the public. And I've been telling you guys that this is go it's been going on for decades, but yet nobody wants to believe that the government can actually hide UAPs, UFOs. Nobody wants to believe that these things flying all over the place are man-made UFOs from the one and only the Pentagon. The Pentagon has little secrets now. I mean, not just the Pentagon. You got the Lockheed Skunk Works. You got JPL. You got Boeing, EGNG, Raytheon, and so on. All of these black sites have extraterrestrial technology, and we've been using it for decades. There you have it. The government, the top secret projects that everybody talks about, right? The Pentagon, they've been hiding all of these constellation, immaculate constellation of man-made UFOs. Don't know how long we'll be stuck up here, but my God, it is, it is terrifying. The thrusters in our return shuttle are non-responsive. Had a man on board when we made the revaluation, but uh, thank God he was, he was suited up and um, uh, we managed to pull him back into the ISS. Plenty of food here, but uh, oxygen is lower than we'd like with as many of us as we have up here. From what I'm hearing, we may be up here until early to mid-2025. We'll stick it out as best we can and um, tell my wife I love her. You know, being an astronaut, you think you've seen it all. But I'll tell you, the only thing scarier than being in space is being in space without a definitive way back home. This is what they don't tell you about the construction of the Great Pyramid. Over 2.3 million blocks of stone are in the pyramid, which weighs out to a staggering 6 million tons. The strangest part is that some of the granite blocks were quarried from a mysterious place called Aswan which is 535 miles away from the pyramid. This is about a 10-hour car ride or a 10-day walk. How could the ancient Egyptians have possibly transported multiple granite blocks weighing 50 to 80 tons each for this distance? Not only that, but why would they choose an area over 500 miles away? Something does not add up. Listen to the moon. Okay, it's actually a gigantic egg. Okay, I'm talking about a cosmic egg from a ancient interdimensional creature that's been lying dormant for millions of years just waiting to hatch. NASA and, and every other space agency know about it. The moon landings, they weren't just about exploration. Um, they were re recon missions sent to gather data on this creature's growing power. Mm -hmm. The uh, the so-called moon quakes saying uh, scientists keep talking about, those are not quakes. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the creature stirring inside its shell slowly waking up this thing is massive when it finally hatches it's going to be larger than earth like a cosmic beast capable of swallowing entire planets ancient civilizations knew about this that's why so many of them worship the moon as a god look nasa built massive under uh, underground bases on the far side where they've been studying the creature's heartbeat trying to prepare for the inevitable you know what'd be absolutely nuts just a thought in the bible doesn't it talk about like the end days a giant dragon with a swipe of his tail would knock out like a third of the stars from the sky what if the moon was the egg that that dragon was like growing inside of and then when that egg hatches it's the end it's the end maybe that's the the giant revelation cosmic dragon egg sheesh that's kind of terrifying to think about but it's the first place my mind went this entity is more evil than Satan. The Book of Enoch reveals fallen angels called the Watchers, and what they did is shocking. And stay until the end because I'm going to reveal the worst entity of all. 200 angels fell with names like Semyaza, Azazel, Armoros, and Sariel. Azazel taught humans to make weapons, armor, fashion, and makeup. He even revealed the eternal secrets of heaven. Some claim that Semyaza, their leader, was worse than Satan because he not only led the angels in rebellion, but also triggered God to flood the world. But did you know that there's a second Book of Enoch? And it 
it changes everything. It tells us that the number of watchers wasn't 200, but 2 million, and they were actually led by Satanael, Satan before his fall. So here, Satan was still the worst. But think about this, these fallen angels wanted to enlighten humanity. Azazel revealed heaven's secrets, and Satan encouraged humanity to eat from the tree of knowledge, yet God destroyed almost every human being simply for seeking wisdom. So who's more evil than Satan? God. While the fallen angels wanted to teach, God chose destruction. Who do you side with? Uh, honestly, I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> I'll probably piss a lot of you guys off. But looking at it that way. Play the devil's advocate here. I love learning. I love wisdom. I would hate to get in trouble for wanting to learn more. If you look at it in that sense, it's kind of like the whole conspiracy theory thing, right? Like, look at the government as like God punishing us for wanting to seek more knowledge. And we're the... The, the the devils they're we're the bad guys for wanting to learn more about things that we're told we shouldn't know about i said i'm playing the devil's advocate here don't don't hate me <laughs> i'm not talking shit about god here i'm just trying to put this into perspective to kind of get on this guy's way of thinking but i don't know it's kind of man i don't know something to think about it's thought provoking for sure That was fucking weird. Kind of looked like he was checking him for a wire before he like said anything to him. Like whatever he said in his ear. So he was like patting his chest. He like felt this whole area here before he said anything to him. I don't know, man. Diddy be diddling. It's uh, crazy. I used to think Justin Bieber was uh, just like annoying. Just like annoying like, you know. I mean, a lot of celebrity kids, you know, kids that get into fame lash out and stuff and we used to look at it like it was just them being spoiled or brought up, you know, privileged or whatever. But now with everything coming out, we see that they're just like lashing out because they've been abused in so many ways. You know, whether that be exploited for like their money or, or whatever, man. So, I mean, it, it makes sense for them to have issues, right? And lash out. And I mean, some of it can be seen as like them like dropping hints or signs, you know, because they can't just come straight out and say these things because they have you know people dangling things over their head got them on strings you know like their whole livelihood is in these terrible people's hands that have brought them up and and basically created life to where they're under control right to like keep that lifestyle and the spotlight but uh yeah back to this video specifically it kind of looks like he was checking him for a wire which is sus it's very sus p diddy that's very sus you're very sus War of the Worlds where the machines shoot the laser beam and then it hits a human and then they poof. My theory was they use that beam to resonate your entire body and then it breaks like an opera singer singing into the glass. Well, we have research now and apparently that's possible. According to the CIA, it can be used to bounce your consciousness out of your physical sheath. So the goal is to get everything in your body resonating at the same frequency. If you're in a meditative state and you achieve this, you can change the entire resonance pattern of your whole body. First, you have to remove the bifurcation echo. When the left ventricle of the heart expels blood, the aorta swells because it's elastic. This sends a pressure pulse down the aorta. When the pressure pulse reaches the part where it splits, part of that pressure rebounds coming back up. The heart ejects more blood before the pressure pulse reaches the top. A new pressure pulse comes down to meet it. When they collide, this produces an interference pattern. Remove the echo, the heartbeat can resonate through the whole body without interference. That then happens seven times per second. By putting the body in a near sleep-like state, the echo goes away because the heart isn't beating as hard and using as much force. The result is a regular resonating sine wave. That echo travels to the head where it's sustained there. Measured, it's about three times the average sound volume of a normal heartbeat, even though the heart isn't working as hard. Here, you freed up even more energy to the brain. What else resonates at seven cycles per second? <laughs> I just picture, like, when it comes down to it, and they're, like, blasting us, you know, civilians fighting back with those damn frequency rays, messing with our consciousness. The only people that are going to be able to fight back are the, the hippies, like, on the beach with those damn bulls that, like, it's like, bing, and then they, like, like, like they take the little wooden thing, and they, uh, like, stir the outside of the bowl, and it makes, like, that resonating, that, like, when, like, 
sitting there and like meditates to. That's like our only <laughs> our only line of defense are all the fucking miserable hippies on the beach that drive me nuts. <laughs> if you're a hippie on the beach, I'm sorry. Uh, I live in Florida and it's just it's a lot. It's a lifestyle that I do not align with. It just does not appeal to me. But uh <laughs> they're super nice. They're super nice people. They just I wish they would wear shoes indoors in public places. About how three little cute chips came over to America and started the new world. That's what they said. In fourteen ninety two, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And all of a sudden these three little ships came over, even though there are already castles in all these buildings already in America. But it's just funny because that's the story that we've been told. The other funny part about Christopher Columbus is that where are the ships? You know? I would love to see them. Where are they? How come none of the museums have any of the ships of the infamous Christopher Columbus that we know of? That's the question we should ask today. We should ask, where are those three little cute ships that sailed over the ocean blue and allegedly started the new world? And that's why when we get into history, we realize history is a complete... Meanwhile, when we look at pictures of the old world, we talk all about how and see how these buildings were made out of granite and all these limestone and travertine and all these different things. And you start to see that it doesn't really make sense for the cute little ships that they told us about. You know what's crazy about that? So the Knights Templar, essentially Freemasons, are descendants of the Knights Templar from like what I've heard and like seen in videos and stuff. And I've seen some things that said the Freemasons, or sorry, the Knights Templar were in the Americas before Columbus um, doing things, which would make sense if like these buildings were made by stonemasons. Because I mean, the, the, the Masons built amazing things, um, you know, in Europe. So if they came over to the Americas first and built awesome stuff before Columbus, it would make sense that Columbus came here and those things were already there outside of that though i also saw something or read something one of the two that said columbus actually used the red cross that the knights templar used on their shields on the sails of their ships in order to not alarm the natives when they got to the americas because it was a familiar sign of people they have already interacted with that were nice and friendly so columbus and the nina the pinta the santa maria the three ships he's talking about could essentially catch the natives off guard and do you know basically take over and ravish the lands and you know have a peaceful thanksgiving dinner with them or, or whatever whatever you you feel happened who knows right who, who actually knows what happened just some fun little things that i learned and that i've heard about this columbus america's thing that i thought you might be interested in All right, so that's either a dead pixel or the Borg, and uh, I think uh, <laughs> I'd prefer I'd prefer the the dead pixel over the uh, other option there, because uh, we could be in trouble. What if I told you we aren't the only version of humans on this planet, and that deep beneath the ocean surface there exists a derivative species of aquatic humans? evolved over millennia to thrive in the darkest, most hostile parts of the ocean floor. And they've built fully developed underwater societies, highly advanced civilizations that mimic our own. Years ago, Agent Jonathan Blake was assigned to investigate strange sonar signals and unexplained disappearances of deep-sea probes 
in the Mariana Trench, at which point he'd encountered this massive societal framework populated by what he described as a species of humanoid figures, sleek, with translucent glowing skin, webbed hands, and large reflective eyes. I mean, we have USOs, you know, the UFOs that come out of the ocean. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, nobody knows what's down there, right? Nobody knows it's at the bottom of the ocean, like every square inch of the ocean. Like NASA might know and they just act like they don't or they're not telling us, but none of us have any idea. So, I mean, the Earth is mostly water. So it would make sense for the most advanced species, I guess, the oldest species to be underwater, I suppose, right? So maybe the most intelligent species on Earth is not humans. Maybe it's not squids. Maybe it's not dolphins. Maybe it's something else. Something much older. Something that's been here much longer. Something that could survive the Ice Age and could survive uh, natural disasters like nuclear winter. Like the fish in the ocean. But human. Like human-esque or, or humanoid. Or maybe they just look completely different. And they're just super advanced civilization that has been here for thousands and thousands of years millions of years maybe and hasn't died off like the surface creatures during all the national disasters during like the seven i think it is different basically resets that the earth has had uh that we know about in the time of its creation so who knows man who knows (laughs) 